Hello and welcome back to the channel. I've got an interesting video for you today. A company called Unihertz reached out to me and said, we make the world's smallest rugged smartphone. Do you want to check it out? Of course, I said yes. So it has arrived. This is the Unihertz Atom. Unihertz, Unihertz, I don't know. Comes in a relatively unassuming black box. It says Atom on the side. On the back, you can see 4G LTE smartphone. It is an octa-core 2 gigahertz processor, comes with 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of built-in storage, 2,000 milliamp hour battery, a 2.45 inch display, 16 megapixel rear facing and 8 megapixel front facing camera with Android 8.1. So it's not the latest and greatest Android, but it's pretty close. And it is IP68 water and dust resistant, and it looks like an absolute beast. So I am ready to open this up, see what comes in the box, turn it on and give it a try. So we get some documentation here at the top. A little SIM ejector tool fell out of there. It does mention it comes with a 12 month warranty. And there is a user guide in here, pretty long user guide. Here is the phone, which we'll put off to the side for just a second. An included screen protector. Look how tiny that thing is. And then two smaller boxes in the bottom of the box. One is the power brick, just a traditional USB power outlet, five volts at 1.5 amps. Then the USB cable, it is USB-C, very surprisingly there, to USB-A cable. And a mini lanyard, a little security strap you could wear it with. Given the size of the phone, this thing might actually be really useful. And finally, of course, we come to the meat and potatoes of the package, the phone itself. And I did have to zoom in quite a bit because this is a really small device. Just to give you a little bit of scale, this is the iPhone XS Max on one side and the Unihertz Atom on the other. But there's your 2.45 inch screen, front facing eight megapixel camera, rear facing 16 megapixel camera. Doesn't have any of those fancy two or three rear facing cameras or anything like that. It does have a USB-C port here on the side. Uh, what I've heard is a reprogrammable push to talk type button, power button on this side, volume buttons on the other side. There's your SIM card slot, and I think also a micro SD card. Let's push it out and see. Oh no, it's a dual SIM card slot. And you can see it also has this red rubber gasket around it just to help keep it water resistant. Make sure that's back securely in there. And this thing absolutely feels like a tank. And I think this is even a fingerprint sensor on the front. You have two capacitive buttons and then a capacitive fingerprint reader on the front as well. And of course, three and a half millimeter headphone jack on the top. You can't do away with that, even though a lot of companies are. Let's go ahead and push the power button and see if it'll come on. Unihertz powered by Android. All right, this is gonna be a little difficult for me to see as well as letting you see it, but it says improve location accuracy, asking if I wanna turn on location services. Sure, why not? Uh, in a previous version of Android, you turned off access to location, turn it back on. Yes. Boy, that's very loud. But now we're at the startup screen. It says hi there, hit next. Connect to mobile network if you have SIM cards, insert them now. I'm gonna say skip on that. Connect to Wi-Fi. Actually, I'm gonna turn this down while we're doing this. Connect to my Wi-Fi network. Oh, typing is gonna be fun. Give you a little taste for just how small that keyboard is. There are my thumbs. That's difficult. Password put in, let's see if it works. It says saved, obtaining IP, connected. Yeah, so I was able to type it in correctly the first time. I made one mistake. That's really surprising for this. That's tiny. Like swipe typing is probably gonna be a major thing on this. We have the option to copy apps and data over. I'm gonna say just set it up as a new fresh device. It says the battery is at 55%. It's really difficult to see what's on the screen here. Sign into my email account and we are all signed in. We can unlock it with a fingerprint. So we'll say next and go ahead and set that up. Fingerprint plus pattern, pin or password. Try the pattern. So I've set up my pattern there. It says locate the fingerprint sensor on the front of your phone. And I guess I can just go ahead and put my finger on it. it does say lift and touch again. Seems pretty straightforward. The screen's actually so small that I can't see the entirety of the circle it's showing on the screen. And I've added a few fingerprints, so I'll say next. Access your assistant with voice match. It should already be set up. I agree. And it says your assistant can already recognize your voice. You're all set. That's gonna if I wanna back up to Google Drive, I'm gonna just say next, next, next and get through this. No thanks. And we're at the home screen. Wow, that is something else. We can go this way to get to the Google Assistant page. I think it's still loading. It is downloading some updates and some apps. So it's probably gonna be a little slower than normal. Swipe up to see the apps that came pre-installed. There's a cell broadcast button. What does that do? Emergency alerts, okay. Downloads, Google Drive, lots of Google apps. There's a pedometer app, a SIM toolkit, an SOS button, a sound recorder, and Zello. Zello is one I'm not familiar with and getting some notifications for stories already because this Google Assistant swipe over from the home screen has started working and I'm getting security alerts from my existing account that I've signed in. Let's go into the settings if we can get there. It says finish setting up your device, transfer data, set up wallpapers and more. I'm gonna go down to the bottom and look at system. 
It says system update. It's updated to Android 8.1.0. I haven't asked the company if they're going to be doing updates on this. They said it was a Kickstarter device, so I'll be curious to see if updates do end up coming out to it, but there are none at the moment. Still, Android 8.1. That's surprising to see. I have seen a couple of newer devices that have Android Pie on them, but still. Oreo's not all that old. Oh, there is a, an update you can download, so it's in a different spot. Instead of system update, I went to about phone and clicked wireless update. And there's a download here. It says it updates the Google security patch, removes the M camera app, increases the touch range of the camera switch button, reduces shutter sound, and optimize aux audio. So there are some interesting updates to that. So we'll let that do its thing. Probably check out the camera while we're in here as well. I'm not going to do a full thorough video about this right this moment, but I'm curious what kind of video this will do. So if I switch over to video mode and hit the settings button in the corner, video quality 1280 by 720. I can go to 1920 by 1080. Video format MP4 or 3GP. You can change the brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, and sharpness. Just leave everything at the defaults there. And then switched over to the front facing camera and for video it looks like 1280 by 720 is the highest it can do. I am very curious to see how the video is going to turn out from this though. Look how small this thing is. So this is a sample video from the front facing camera on the Unihertz Atom. It doesn't look terrible on the screen but again it's 720p so let me know what you think about it. Let me know how it looks. I might watch this back and see how it looks. It doesn't sound bad. It's not I tap the red button here on the side a little bit, and by default, apparently, it has Zello as the setup for that. I have to go back and change that. I don't know what Zello does. Let's try some rear-facing video. So here's a quick sample video from the rear-facing camera on the Unihertz Atom. This is 1080p video, presumably 1080p at 30 frames per second. You let me know how it looks, how it sounds, sitting here in my home studio in pretty ideal lighting conditions. I'm really kind of surprised by this. I'm sure it's not the absolute best thing that's ever existed or anything, but this is kind of surprisingly good. It's difficult. I mean, the screen is so small, the text is so small, interacting with things with even a normal sized thumb, because my hands are not huge, they're pretty average sized hands, it's difficult to control this. And since I've been running it, it's already dropped from 55 to 50%, so I'm curious how long the battery's gonna last. But anyway, I think I'll take a little bit of time with this, maybe stick a SIM card in it and see how that works, go out and do some video samples in other areas, and uh, we'll wrap this up in a little while. And we're back the next day. I've spent a little bit of time with this phone, a little bit, Pun. Unintentional. Kind of. I took a SIM out of my secondary phone, stuck it in this device, and I've been using it as my second device for today. Some very early thoughts about it. One, the camera was a little worse than I thought it was. Just a quick walk around outside, getting some better quality video footage. This is what outdoor footage looks like on the Unihertz Atom. Very bright, very sun straight overhead. It's not completely horrible, it's not unusable, it's just not something I would consider primary camera worthy, but again, super small phone. I did a few photos around the house and a couple outdoors. I even used the time-lapse mode that's built into it. It does a 1080p time-lapse, which was not the worst thing I'd ever seen. I could actually probably see using this for something like a time-lapse camera to watch the 3D printer print, but as a primary camera and a selfie camera, anything like that, I probably not. If you could get the actual Google camera on this, it might be a little bit better, but it is capped out at 1080p 30 for the video, and actually it's like 1080p 29.961 or something like that. It was kind of an odd number. Another thing to briefly talk about is this fingerprint sensor, so if I use it, you can see I can get the phone to wake up pretty consistently, but it was not always that way. When I first started messing with it, you can see here it's not waking up. There we go. I've put in probably six or seven fingerprints now, and that's just for two thumbs and one forefinger. And I'm getting better about figuring out where to put my finger on it for it to register properly, but I did have some trouble getting it to work, and most of that was just the small size of the fingerprint sensor. So if you happen to pick one of these up and you're having trouble, register multiple fingerprints. I even tried this out for a little bit of gaming. If I swipe over, you can see a couple of the games I've installed. I did try Pokemon Go on it. It worked. It was not the best experience in the world. I don't think I actually tried to catch anything with it. I just spun Pokestops and used it while I was going around town, set it on the dashboard and forgot it was there. But I also installed a few other games here like Wordscapes, so I can go into that. It does have to reload pretty much every time. I've seen that out of a lot of games and a lot of phones though. But you can see on this one I can swipe around to hit the, the different words and yeah, it's a game, it's playable, it has sound. I'll get the six letter word. There you go, Wallop. I saw this game called Aqua Park in the store and decided to try it out. I'd seen people play it before but I'd never tried it myself. Load times are a little bit long, but there we go. They can see this game playing. I can't see it very well because it's a tiny screen and we're going to overhead, but I can go left and right and I can, we'll see if I can find it. There we go. Back in the, the trail. Oh no, I failed. 
but it plays halfway decently okay. And something like Helix Jump, I've seen a lot of people play this game. Again, I'm gonna let you see just how long this does take to load. It's not hugely long, but I mean, it's, it's survivable. There you go. And now if I swipe around, it should move. I'm not very good at that game either, but it didn't seem to have that many dropped frames. It's such a small screen, I'm guessing that it doesn't take a huge amount of processing power to make it work. And I very, very briefly tried PUBG on here. I'm not a PUBG player at all, but it took a really long time to load up. And that's the, the next thing to talk about is just the screen size. And by that, I mean the screen resolution. It's such a low resolution that doing anything on the screen that requires any amount of dexterity is really difficult. I'm, I'm not even gonna let it sit here and, and continue loading because it's gonna take a while. That's sort of the one biggest complaint that I have about this thing so far. It's not that it's such a small device that it's hard to hit things on the screen, it's that Android isn't really set up to work with this small of a screen anymore, which means that these individual elements across the top, even if I expand them out, they're still really small. But on the smaller band here up at the top, I can't hit those individual ones. I can't hit the, the settings button here because it's so small. Maybe if I were using a teeny tiny point stylus, I could do it. And as you saw earlier, typing text and stuff, really difficult, you really have to be precise with it. I tried the swipe typing briefly and that worked. It just takes a little more patience. So I guess we've kind of gotten to the point with where am I on this phone? What do I really think about this phone after having used it for about 24 hours? It's got a pretty decently bright screen. It gets the job done little hard to read again because it's so small. Everything that I've thrown at it has worked. Some things just take a little longer than others. The camera is not all that great, but it has a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Three and a half millimeter working just fine with a pair of headphones. It has a USB-C port. It has a programmable button here on the side. If I hit that programmable button, you can see it brings up the camera. It doesn't take terribly long. It does do 1080p video. The video is not really that amazing, but it's, it's 1080p. So I've got a bit of a mixed opinion about it. It's a serviceable phone. It's $260, I think. So it's not exactly like ultra budget $50 phone, but it's also very rugged. It's supposed to be just fine if you put it underwater. Try it underwater. Continuing to work underwater. Although when it is underwater, it seems to think that you're holding the fingerprint sensor, the home button, so it brings up the, the Google Assistant. Or if you want to slam it into the ground, I'm not going to do that because someone sent me a rugged phone once and said, you can slam it into the ground, and I did, and it exploded. So I don't do that anymore. Exploded meaning like glass and plastic went everywhere. So I don't do those kinds of tests. But I think for the price point, if you're looking for a secondary phone, you're looking for maybe a phone for a child, because I handed this to my 10 year old and he immediately just thought it was his phone. He was going to just start playing games on it and he was gonna start, whatever. I said, no, you're not getting this one. I still have to make a video about it. I'm still not ready to give my 10 year old a phone full time. I don't know, it's not terrible. It's really solidly built. It's got a relatively new version of Android on it. That they have said on their website they're going to be updating it, but the last time I saw an update about that was like February, so will Android Pie or beyond come to this? It's really hard to say, but I'm going to go ahead and put a link to where you can find this down in the video description. As a reminder, UniHertz did send this out for me to take a look at for free. I did not pay for it, they did not pay me, but if you happen to buy it using a link to Amazon that I provide or something, I will probably get a little bit of a kickback, so I definitely appreciate that. But that's gonna wrap the video up for today, so thanks so much to UniHertz for sending this out for me to take a look at. Thanks to you guys for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you happen to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already to get notified when new videos videos come out. I'll see you again next time.